Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Regional Qualifier. Nailed it. Game number three. Um, I was hurriedly trying to finish a little bit of food because it's been uh, it's been quite some time since this series started, True. despite the fact that it is all tied up and we have a best of three on our hands now. And are we any closer to knowing who is likely to win, given that King Zone had a pretty good start and then really kind of fell apart on the execution front in game number one? Admittedly, with a harder to execute comp, and then kind of just woke up and Wombo power slammed yeah. Afrika Freaks into the ground in game number two. The dirty karma top that we definitely don't like here. I think we have to stop booing Atlas. So we're going to boo it yes, we definitely in Pick and Ban if it's ever locked in. We will go back and edit it from the VOD. If it's not, <laughs> yes, if it's support, yeah. it's fine. I mean, I was trying to have, you know, reasons for it to be okay in game number one. From now on. Top lane know. karma deserves to be booed. Absolutely. Just to be clear. That's the way we feel. The mid lane variety also deserves to be good. In fact, the only time I think Karma is okay is if it's support, to be honest. And you're in a lane where you want to dominate early. And I think that's okay. But what, what a freak of losing streak is top lane Karma on in the LCK? It feels I like every globally good team tried against yeah. SKT and lost. So yeah. We, uh, yeah, it's not working. Um, so let's not double down anymore. Let's move to different and fun and interactive picks like Kevin. Let's do that. <laughs> well, um, actually, during the regular season, it was uh, played 16 times, and I believe lost about 11 of those times. And then if we move over to the playoffs, I have these stats here also. I can so, do this. I'm getting there. I'm getting there as well. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah. let's both Let's both. So go Karma, Karma Top was played twice in the... Uh, in the playoffs, and it lost twice. So 100% loss rate. Also mid lane, 100% loss rate. Uh, Karma support, 100% win rate. With some uh, Atlas sample sizes. Two? Of course. One? Yeah, one. Nice! One in the mid lane, uh, one in the bottom lane. There you go. Twice top lane. Yeah, that's a lie. There is the depth. We just can't read that alpaca there. Yep, and uh, we're going to have the pregame podcast again, guys. Are we? Here we go. Yay! Actually, no, that has not been confirmed just yet. I probably shouldn't you jinx it. You know what it. is confirmed? King Zone did choose red side. I thought you were going to tell us about your Hello Kitty adventure um, new position, because you, you hadn't fully confirmed I, it. I, I have two things to share. One of them is job-related, and one of them is observation. Which okay. one would you prefer for now? Job-related. Uh, I am happy that I can finally confirm what I'll be doing in 2020. Whoa, what are you going to be doing in 2020? I'm moving into the realm of talent management, but I only have one client locked in. Okay. It's someone you know and love. Okay. It's Pengu. I have, in fact, <laughs> gotten representation of Pengu. Uh-huh. Because at the end of the day, I just have went up and Have you convinced him to make merch? No, no, no. We're pushing for the merch. It's Riot that's holding us back. Oh, no. You and Pengu against the world, man. I am gar I'm not even going to show up if we can't get Pengu this merch. <laughs> so, in fact, this merch deal is going to come in. Pengu will have merch. I will make sure. Otherwise, we're not going to go on to the, I don't know if it's a rift or a battlefield or chessboard. <laughs> we're refusing. We're striking. So, all right, all right. no Pengus allowed anymore if I have my management about. And I thought it was no champion selects allowed, but they are going to let one through for game number three. As as you can see, King Zone have elected for the red side, understandably. Uh, moving over to their side selection, and once again, we're going to have that Varus band coming in, and what are Afrika Freaks going to pivot to now that the Rise first pick has not worked out in game number two? Well, I hope it's a Gragas ban. Yeah. Unless we're really amping up Gragas to a first pick ten. I mean, you can first pick the Gragas here pretty comfortably. You it's could. not like Rise is a super contested pick here. So they left open Karthus and it didn't cost them because they lost to the not Karthus ban. So yeah. maybe they ban Gragas to try to beat Karthus? No, we decide that Rakan has to be absolutely banned on blue side. But they've already banned Varus. So I wonder what duo lane they want to pick here. A Lucian Braum lane, perhaps? I wonder where we're going. For Afrika, Ezreal priority will be higher with the Rakan ban, and maybe that's what King Zone are considering. Remember, Akali Aatrox, that's been their way, but it's always the Talia ban for Yukal as the third ban here. Are we buying time to consider? We're gonna ban Zaya, and now Ezreal is a very hot ticket AD cap. As is this Talia pick as well. It might be King Zone leaving that available so that they can try and guarantee that Gragas lock in. And Freaker not looking to take the bait here is I think this is definitely the best first pick they could go with. 
and it is going to be locked away. Okay, they had a plan for Gragas, which is uh, all we were really hoping for here. Giving it to Kuz is not an option. But now, Kaisa X or Ezreal Tarm are both available and could be considered for King Zone. The Talia, though, like you mentioned, is something that's going to occupy their minds, that's for sure. Well, Kaisa is going to occupy their minds for a moment, uh, and then the Karma's going to be locked in. So, boo, 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 and uh, I guess a freaking win this game. Next. Five games, baby. <laughs> five games, five Karma losses. That's the dream. Well, now I freaking get both. So now suddenly it feels like they got the heist yeah. on this particular draft. At least uh, alphabetically, King's Own are uh, staying true to their name. As uh, the Jace is going to be locked in third. So a lot of our uh, color coordination over on the Afrika side and a lot of high powered and high comfort champions for all three players on the top side of the map. I'd be very scared if they dropped in Draven Thresh with this draft. Hell That'd be yeah. uh, quite the draft from Afrika Freaks. But let's see how King Zone want to approach it. Looking for the jungle pick here against ostensibly Gragas, and Kuz is going to bring back a Kuz favorite. He doesn't yeah. go Rek'Sai very much anymore. Everyone kind of, after the small nurse towards Rek'Sai, decided that she could never be played again. But if you want to keep the tempo high, and if you want to play a bot lane game to deal with someone like a Draven, there are worse picks than Rek'Sai. But welcome back, Rek'Sai. And welcome back, potentially, the Shaco-style pathing over some thick walls. And it might mean that Kuz is going to go for some of these aggressive invades, pick up the Hail of Blades, of course, so that you will be able to do a lot of damage to the Gragas. It didn't work for Dread, though, and in his tactic against Kuz's Gragas. And Red Side Rek'Sai doesn't have the same gank path against a bot lane that Blue Side Rek'Sai does. Remember, Blue Side Rek'Sai can just slightly invade the enemy blue buff and go over the wall from behind, right? Whereas Red yeah. Side Rek'Sai's uh, geometrically similar gank is top lane. So well, they, they're not going to ban Draven still after this play. So I actually would be disappointed not to see Afrika just roll back the Draven just to remove ways for King Zone to be everywhere at the same time. Well, LeBlanc just snap locked by Neon here for the mid lane. That is going to confirm that Karma is either a top lane or a support. So everyone, uh, yes, uh, we might just be doing it again. As Aiming decides this time it's going to be the Ezreal, not going to be the Draven. And uh, the Nautilus like you were talking about in game number two. Senan, back to what he knows. I guess just thinking the confidence down and going to the safest pick. That This is basically the most successful champions of all of the Afrika players. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, the Jace obviously has taken quite a lot of aggro since uh, yep. it was as contested. But you're right, Keen is a very strong Jace player. King Zone, got to work out where the Karma is going. Will we be re-editing out the booze and having a Karma support one time? Well, Shen's been locked in, so yeah, honestly, sure. we don't know yet. I huh. hope that it's Shen top. That would be cool. Huh. I'm guessing Shen's support, only because the Jace matchup isn't a particularly comfortable one in the early game. Not to mention Tucson has been uh, a Shen aficionado oh, yes. in the past. And you can do all sorts of uh, pack up and leave lane shenanigans with Kaisa and Shen. And also, if you both press R at the same time Ooh, on the bottom piggyback. side of the map, you've got a really cool piggyback plus a gigantic shield for the Kaisa. So Rek'Sai QRs into knock up as Kaisa and Shen are swooping in and LeBlanc are coming team. Yeah, beautiful. So uh, globally, a pretty easy composition to figure out as far as the game plan. But Rascal is on the Karma top lane, and so far that has been the big L, Alice. Yes, it has been just bad. And the only big that we like on this world has big W, shout out to Australia. <laughs> the big L, not so good. The Karma, not working so good in the top. And like you mentioned, basically they've given Afrika Freaks the proverbial back massage because they've all got Ultra Comfort. They do. This is the Afrika Freaks saying, okay guys, let's get our heads back in this game. Let's play some fun League of Legends. Pick the champions that you are most successful on. And the Talia sn sneaking through draft is a I mean, really dangerous did it sneak, one. though? Because they orchestrated a draft where they first picked Gragas. You know the Talia is going to be picked up by you, yeah. It yeah. is his OTP. One true pairing, one trick, whatever you want to call it. He goes on to it, and Neon's got that matchup that Talia never loves. But he ain't as practice on LeBlanc as Yukal is on Talia. Yep, he does magic on this champion. Let's see if he can do it here in game three.
King's Own fans finding their voices here in Lowell Park as uh, Afrika, five man invade. This card puts down a ward. And uh, they attempt Aww. to clear it, not able to Couldn't do get so. the ward. And Deft, solo mission, knows that he can do this. Exploring some territory on the bottom side. Doesn't need to jam the ward straight away because he knows roughly how long it takes to traverse territory. So wants to keep the ward up time for as long as possible. No we sweep is actually available and, now. And I, I love that you mentioned Maybe sweeper because the point I wanted to get to is we got to some very interesting places in IOSK5. You remember those double sweeper starts by Griffin? Yeah. In some of those games to really control space. And in melee versus melee support matchups, I actually think it's uh, pretty good um, to try to control that. Theory there is that so much of it about whether you can walk up, start to pull the minion aggro to get to push one way or the other requires you to know if you're kind of face checking a Tom Kench or another champion who, if you come to him early, can actually do quite a lot of damage. So that's why the double sweeper is there. But of course, the cost is any sort of temporary vision. Freaker stacking themselves in the secondary brush. Moving up. And let's see how King Zone deal with this minion break. Yeah, prioritizing giving Cuz a pretty strong leash. And that will help the Rek'Sai play aggressively throughout this early game. I like that one a lot. Not nearly as dangerous as the Thresh and Draven lane would be. So Deft and Tucson can certainly afford to give up a little bit of territory. Again, remember that in this particular case, the Draven was up and not actually banned by the side yep. of King Zone. So they played with fire and they weren't burned in this case. Not to mention uh, the Yasuo being available and Yukal deciding to go with his uh, comfort pick in the Talia instead of the Yasuo, which he's also had yeah. a fair bit he's of actually uh, success a, on. a sick Yasuo player as well. Yeah. So that was uh, not a point to m move over. As we should mention here that Kuz has definitely played the most Rek'Sai in Summer of any player, given oh, that yes. everyone else is like 0-3 to three games. Mm -hmm. And he's played a lot of pretty good uh, Rek'Sai as well. As speaking of good things, Neon, pretty great trade there in the mid lane against Yuka. Neon, if you're going to go the LeBlanc, I, I half expected him to go all in, right, and go Ignite in this matchup to really keep um, Talia on the short leash. He's gone Teleport to try to match, and I think that's the, that's the hesitate, not hesitant, but that's the begrudging respect move. It's like, yeah. you go Ignite if you think you're just like, how dare this guy blind Talia against me, I'm going to wham him. In this case, going the block with Teleport is, I'm still going to have control. I'm not going to have the kill pressure, but I'm going to be able to match some of the rooms. And to be fair, King Zone, like we mentioned, have just the most ability to be everywhere at once. Oh, yeah. Their ability to respond to any sort of situation as well is what's most impressive about this composition. Even Cuz can close distance very effectively with his Void Rush. So the big lose is probably Keen, right? Because he's on a champion that does best in pushing down and getting turret plates, and Kings don't have a million globals to join him there. Whereas Afrika, they don't have a TP on their AD carry. Does that mean they're actually going to play towards their AD carry or leave him on an island? To be fair, it is Cleanse Ezreal, so maybe we're just throwing everything top and trying to make the Karma a non-fact. Yeah, we'll need that King Zone have that teleport advantage on the bottom side as well. So to add insult to injury globally, of course, could be difficult. But we do need to move into the mid game before King Zone's composition can really achieve any of these things that we're talking about in theory. Such a freaker could be here. able to get to something. Most likely not, like you say, uh, with a gank on the top side. Do want to talk about uh, this Karma pick as well because he has switched over to the Comet instead of the Kleptomancy. So Rascal with a bit more in, in uh, his uh, spells as well. Probably saw that the Kleptomancy just wasn't really working this series, so I'm not hating it by any means. Yeah. Look at the King's own side, and you like Karma to a certain point, you like Rek'Sai to a certain point. It does feel like the mid-game execution here from King's own is so important. They are a scary mid-game team. Maybe not quite to the degree, of some of our previous Karma drafts, but still, uh, they spike really hard at one item, two items, and then from there it all falls apart. So it's going to definitely be our eyes peeled on the King Zones. I think the Freak are the gods of late game by any means themselves, but it's just how much pick CC inside of King Zone. Speaking of pick CC, yeah, decent taunt lands there as yeah. aiming has to walk away. Not a whole lot of mana, but actually holds on to the 
Arcane shift there as well. Who's the better team fighting team? Really just fun to look at, right? I mean, I actually, I like Kingzone's composition with the Karma a little bit more because Ezreal Karma has always been that uh, really awkward situation with Ezreal being much more of a spell weaving AD carry. Deft is going to be building a Rage Blade. I mean, he wants as much attack speed as possible. And Who has the most health in well. this game at 30 minutes in? Exactly. Uh, Shen, maybe? Nautilus Rexar? might get a redemption, so it might be Shen. I don't think it's going to be. Well, maybe. I mean, Black Cleaver. I don't know, man. But uh, when we're having this discussion and we don't quite know, that's when you know these health bars ain't going to be too high. King Zone want to pick in the mid game, Afrika want to siege. That's the only real, very clear battle line. Everything else is kind of user error or user outplay. Engage also from the Afrika side. Yeah, pretty strong. Not quite as kind of reliable as a King Zone because it's so single target and has the Rex size a little bit more reliable. But yeah, this is a really interesting game going forward. There's very little guaranteed in the draft compared to some of our previous drafts. Yeah, I do like the the engage and siege options though from Afrika's yeah. side. I mean, Gragas, you don't need to talk about that, and Nautilus Clear as well. well. I mean, they've all got a, a lot of buttons they can press. Not to mention, you Cal, if you can pick anyone off, even with uh, just the seismic shove, like you can find someone in an off position and then Jace and Ezreal need no introduction when it comes to the poke, so I like that. Here's the Kuz red side, rec side gank path we talked about. Amusingly, did get six from uh, yeah, throwing from out the ward. Away. But that's why we we're talking about. Blue side, rec side will always make the play very close to the king zone outer bot lane turret where you tunnel over and look for a kill, you know, with potentially a Nautilus flash auto. Yep, but from the red side, your only play is top side gank, and that's why Jace knows as long as you patrol that gank path, you're probably safe from Rek'Sai, and thus Rek'Sai doesn't have that many places to go. Well, clearing out that tunnel did mean that Dread gave away his position. Rascal just moves immediately away from the top lane out of the turret. So he has a to reset. By the way. Yeah, I mean, it's Yukal's Dalia. He's pretty good at that champion. Neon held on to the teleport, though. So, possibly, we do have some shenanigans in this mid-game. High-value Banshee Veil game against LeBlanc Karma Solar Lance. Oh, hell yeah. Even death as well. Yep. The Senate's going to take a bit of damage, but Aftershock going to help him out. Susan also with that uh, particular keystone. As uh, we've got Control Wards being swapped on King's own side. Void Seek a fair bit of damage there onto Aiming, as you can see. As Senen, he threads the needle, and the wall comes down as well, but jumps off it immediately. The taunt is going to turn around as Kuz moves on in. Neon gets it! That is going to be the WR punch to the face, and First Blood goes over to King Zone into the mid lane. And Neon having this LeBlanc online early is a terrifying factor for Afrika Freaks. He got Rome down. He was in Weaver's wall range, but he very quickly understood that there was no way for him. Just puncture through the middle of a King Zone squad in position. So Senon goes down basically for free. Neon's got blue. He's got a kill. He's going to get going, and that will help him outstrip the early magic resist that Talia has already put together. And I tell you what, Death and Tucson have been playing some pretty good League of Legends so far today, and it feels like the communication between Kingzone members has just been better than what we've seen of them in the past. That was a coordinated gank on the bottom side in reaction to Afrika making a move. Kingzone made it look pretty easy. Shen's going to go back home. We've got double pickaxes done for Death. See where he decides to go in the build, and I think his Void Seeker landing was actually pretty important. Even down to half health at the very beginning of the play meant that he couldn't play up on this Ezra. Very quickly, I think the Freak understood that the ruse was over. TP yeah. value there was insane. And justified for the LeBlanc. Top side with Meyer just pretty much parity. You know, the only CS lead of many meaningful amount is kind of 10 CS from depth. Yeah. On the bottom side, waiting to see where he goes with the double pickaxe. There was a time when he just jammed as much AD as possible, but usually it means man immune into the Rage Blade, and we get that confirmation. Yeah, the tier is going to come in. I'm actually finding this a little bit interesting given the fact that Def probably wants to be doing more physical damage rather than what the man immune build generally does, which is into Nash's Tooth and more AP. But uh, we'll mean that MR going to be pretty high value on the Afrika side. And you're not obviously on a bound to go in. You can just roll a hurricane and kind of work yeah. out yeah, a yeah. secondary build, but I definitely take your point, Alice. That is the expected standard, mainly because you become a siege monster with the cooldown reduction on the W and the big AP values you can get to. King Zone want to fight at this point, and Afrika want to siege. 
We're not even at one full item yet. We're getting it here, and I think King's gonna take this to remember Shen as all. Well. Yeah, that's a huge flash in, though. The knockoff, the layering of CC is fantastic as Dread goes gold, and Senino finds himself with Deft in front of him, and the Gragas is already dead. Senin just trying to run out of here. Couple more autos as Def does throw down the ult and Kane misses the shock blast. Senin's gonna probably die as an afterthought as the Karma picks up that kill and now Yukal trying to get something back as Rascal gets himself the ultimate. And Deft another sidestep. Neon over the wall tidies this one up as True Shot Barrage is going to go wide. We do have the passive coming down as Yukal immediately cleanses. Seismic Shove is going to get rid of not the real LeBlanc. And they haven't even found a kill yet as Tucson with another sidestep. Damn, King Zone. Their button pressing ability today is looking pretty damn good. Here's the Weaver as well. They want to clean up some kills. Interrupted. Oh, no. There we go. Void Rush comes down, but he does have the seismic shove. And now Kaz might just eat these threaded volleys. Oh. Another tunnel, not enough. And Yukal is going to at least get one kill for the Afrika Freaks. For a moment there, it seemed like so many members of King Zone were in a prison of Yukal's construction. Almost seen that crack of dawn, but one prisoner will be taken down in Cuz. Kingzone are getting the fights they want. They want to use their pick comp now with early power spikes to fight. And with their teleport advantage, remember it's double TP in terms of a TP and a Stan United bot side. Compared to the cleanse and compared to the inferior map tools, Afrika just play with fire. They get burnt as they should be. Love the fact that Tucson went from behind and then taunted so that helplessly walking towards and away from safety was the Afrika support. But what I wanted to take away from this is how much team play from King Zone to keep allies alive on a sliver of health. Just incredible. This whole time though, the Ezreal was bottom side eating turret plates as uh, Tucson somehow surviving this is absolutely insane. Back comes in and of course Shelly was actually taken by King Zone. Kaz was ready for this. Interrupts. Oh, yeah. Almost gets a kill. Yukal, of course, as we know, is never going to miss. A no. seismic shove because it's God of Talia. Last order. The only way they even get one, though. Trisha Barrage going to land onto the members of King Zone's bottom lane down here as we check in on what Aiming's put himself together. Going towards the Iceborne Gauntlet build this time on the Ezreal. He does have the Man Immune already done. Death is still a little while away from that one. It's Ocean Drake once again going to be our first Drake, much like game number one. And uh, Afrika looking to try and get control of this area. They know some cooldowns are down, specifically Stan United, but everything else is up, including TP. Do Afrika have the ability to take King Zone in a skirmish? You have to assume the answer is no. Well, Tunnel comes in from Kuz. He wants to try and take down Zenon here as the Blast Cone is going to put Kuz into the Dragon Pit. Cute little play there from the Nautilus as King Zone are playing so far up and so aggressively. As they should, I think. I think they really do have a pretty big lead in any sort of skirmish here. The pick power they have is insane. Rising shove would have landed. Oh. As uh, we go back to get the chain onto Kane, a lot of damage there as Rascal lands a cheeky Q. Aeon's been clean this game. Damn right he has. We were talking about the potential for Yukal's Talia and his expertise of the champion to negate. A standard counter pick like the LeBlanc, but Neon has played LeBlanc through many different metas, but obviously not to the respect of Yukal's Talia. He's making us mince our words and eat them a little bit here, as he's looked very good on LeBlanc, and he's a back short of Ludens and really continuing what is a lot of ability power already stacked up. And I actually think it's even bigger than just Neon playing better than expected on this pick, because we know that Neon is the back the backbone of the emotions of King's Zone, sure. right? He's so good at just being smiley all the time and helping this team get their mental back. And uh, if he's playing like this, you best believe he's spreading that around the team to help King Zone's uh, mindset improve. So really, really important that it's Neon that's performing well in this series. It's really important that Def gets a shop in. You know he must have at oh, least so Man Immune, but possibly more than that. That's a bit of a uh, yucky use of the Rift Herald. It's jammed around Raptors there. Yeah. Now, the only reason to do that, I don't believe it was timing out, so I believe that was perhaps to try to make a Drake play. There's an Inspire into the mid lane as Rascal doesn't land that Q, but Cuz moves on over. We'll be able to get the CC down as the Void Rush gets rid of the turret aggro, and Cuz is easily able to lock down hey. the kill under the Jace. There you go. Rift Herald mid, jungle visit, go topside and get the kill. No turret place to cash in on, but 
at least this Karma is getting some resources and potentially getting her mid-game itemization on time. It's yeah. a very different Karma as well. Yeah. It's going to be the Zondi's Hourglass completed. Lost Chapter there as well, so building towards huh. most likely the Luden's Echo is item number two. I, to me, that is a I want to play weak side wave clear and not die to ganks as fast. Yeah. Karma. Because otherwise, why wouldn't you just go utility for bigger shields and try to walk around, right? The Zonia's complete is peculiar and thus suggests maybe a slightly less grouped karma than we're used to, more of a wave clear karma. And once that Ludens comes in, that wave clear will certainly be uh, pretty comfortable. Susan helping clear out this minion wave. Another great true shot barrage there from aiming to soften up the bottom lane of King Zone, who are defending the outer turret top. Not really much of a notable gold lead though. About 700, sorry, about 500, 400 between the two teams. So King Zone still a lot more work to do to get this mid game ganking composition working. A lot of their lane assignments work though. Yukal went Ludens to be able to roam rather than say a Banshee Veil in order to survive. So that means LeBlanc is in a pretty damn good spot against both Keen and Yukal with the gold lead he already has. Staying mid lane, but three members hanging around mid here. Because shadowing as well will give Neon a way out if he wants to distort over. And there's just a QR combo onto Yukal. Show him who's boss. Dreads predatoring his way towards the top side though as he wants to get on over. Good body slam comes in and Tucson knew that was happening. He's got himself the stopwatch as the teleports now come in. Stand United still available. Afrika, five members here aiming, taking so much damage. There from Deft and Cuz says, all right, you guys have your party top lane. Neon says, have your party top lane as well. And they're going to be able to take the Dragon and the outer turret mid lane in trade for this outer on the top side, if they can even get that. They need to complete the top lane turret. Afrika seemed to be making a play because all the vision around Drake was already set up by King Zones. They want to get something somewhere. And top lane was the only place there. But they have to overstay to even try it. They give up to the pretty robust defense. And the fact that they've not backed for a long time and not laid vision actually means they just get straight up nothing Atlas, so they should have considered a full reset into a slower tempo, but at least a more guaranteed top lane out of tower instead of trying to skip some steps and ending up ultimately with nothing. That was a huge trade-up. From King Zone, they got two turrets and a Drake, and uh, they didn't even that, lose. That's not a trade-up. That's, uh, that's, that's two free gifts. Yeah. There was I no two-for-one special. The response to the pressure was adequate on King Zone's side. <laughs> nope, this is free gifts. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, it's getting towards Christmas. Oh, but we missed Christmas in July. It's September. Uh, and basically in Australia, it's like Christmas in July in any northern hemisphere place, you know? In case you guys don't know, December is the first month of summer mm -hmm. in Australia. So I've actually never had a white Christmas till I came to Korea. Neither had I. In fact, uh, I, I went back for, for Christmas as well. Uh, Christmas has passed. It was my first. The 2018 Christmas was my first cold Christmas ever. In case you guys are wondering, the song is still great, even if you can't relate to the White Christmas. <laughs> yeah. We're still dreaming of it. It's just because we can only dream because it's always way too hot. Who sings song. the most famous version? Is that Sinatra? I don't, I don't know. I always guess it's Sinatra. I think I over apply his name. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Christmas carols and who wrote them. That's a very beautiful song. It's, not, it it's obviously who like most famously performed and yeah, yeah, wrote yeah. it. It's top bot lane. Yep, Rascal in trouble. He's going to get booped back as oh. another seismic shove landing at a very late flash. you got to flash before you get booped. And uh, I think he thought that he was out of range, but Yukal doesn't miss those spells. Cuz is eating everything on this map, though, as he's stealing away the red buff. Very close to completing that Black Cleaver as well, as they've got control vision everywhere, bottom side. Felt like Rascal was set up to be able to split push quite comfortably, but unfortunately, not able to do so. And notice the search and destroy comp, which is kind of how I think of a King Zone comp like this, early power spike, pink comp. Hasn't really been able to do that for a while. Africa are making about their game. This Neon! What the heck? He He's just dead. dived into his death! Yep. That's called a face plant, ladies and gentlemen, and now the turret might suffer a similar fate. Void Seeker not going to find the Siege minion like it wanted to, and now Afrika, with this one lonely caster creep, should be able to do it, aiming with the Sheen proc. Going to lock that one down, and Afrika just get gifted the mid laner and the mid lane out of turret. That's not how you look. No, uh, you do not. W into lots of people. That's really not how you play the Lebon. Yeah. That was like uh, there was a diving board set up in a troll location in front of 
what was a painting of a, uh -huh. a pool. Ah, on the floor. yes. And then he dived headfirst into the painting of the pool and uh, died. Yeah, that's very apt. We're not going to get a replay of that one just yet. We're going to look at the bot lane play. Remember that King Zone's comp is we go somewhere and everyone can pack up and join really quickly. So that's why it's awkward when you just die in the yeah. bot lane. So they didn't have a plan there. Let's watch now. You know what he wants to do? He wants to wave clear. Let's watch who he gets connected with. I mean, Dread has body slam, so... I mean, Senen also has auto attack. Yeah, but I mean, Dread's body slam is true. Obviously, a little bit more mobile. And distortion as well is very That is a stun, by the way. Good friend, Neon. Mm -hmm. You would hope he was aware of that. Well, hopefully he's uh, bearing it in he, mind he now. He gave away a bounty as well. Yeah. So, oops. I think it might have gone to Ezreal, too. Yikes. Well, aiming, we know what he can do. We, uh, call, we call that a throw. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's not unsalvageable. They still do have a lot of pick power, and we were really at our wits' end trying to work out what to kind of side with this game went on. Again, we mostly talk about Afrika Siege. Here's what we will say. If Afrika get the Baron, oh boy, the Kings don't run out of options. Yeah, the Siege composition on Afrika's side is just Very swingy Baron here. Whoever gets first Baron, that is our predicted win. Well, Kings own... Now milling about this bottom side, Fernal Drake in 30 seconds. Now, Afrika often makes mistakes in these sort of steps around an objective, and Kings don't have a lot of pick power, so that's kind of what we're looking at now. Some trading places here with Kuz rolling around the jungle, pushing through the mid lane minion wave. Well, vision control is now being ascertained by Afrika Freaks. Being able to lock that one up seven seconds before the Infernal Drake arrives is certainly fantastic. One cheeky control ward here will allow Cuz to get forward. As speaking of forward, Deft is going to dive onto Keen, who has to flash to get out of the way. I don't think he's out of harm's way yet, though, as Deft picks up that kill comfortably onto the Jace. Exactly what King Zone were looking for. That was the big turning point in game number two. Keen being caught. This one won't lead to a Baron, but Infernal is high value. Neon. Neon's Learned got the Banshee lesson. Veil this time, so he can be a little bit more wanton with his aggression. Aiming. That's a lot of burst damage, but flash forward from Neon. He's still looking for aiming. It's Cuz locks it down with the ultimate. Two kills so quickly in this fight is now Dread in so much trouble. The flash forward, the auto attack, and Cuz locks that one up as Deft. He deals with the Drake as an afterthought as now Yukal is bringing King Zone towards the Baron. He has to try to find a way to stay alive and keep them from picking up the Baron. It's going to be hard. Yep, Neon just dives on forward, grabs the chain, grabs the next one, grabs the third as the Void Seeker. Not quite enough damage as now Neon dives across the pebbles. It's not really what you want though as they've started this Baron and Yukal is trying to stay away from the clone as he can't do anything to stop this. Neon just. In position, he has the vision, and now he has the Baron. Baron was confirmed for the side of King Zone. Made their mistake, but not made to pay with it. As once again, a freaking trip on their shoelace a little bit. They tied them up with that kill in the mid lane that gave them a lot more control of the pace of this game. They knew where Neon was. Things all seeming like they would be fine, but. It's all about the pick comp. Aiming gets the first unloading and already locked on there was the Rek'Sai. Gets his man, gets a double, and no problem at all. King Zone Dragon X get the sort of lead that was looking so much trickier just two minutes ago. Exactly, and now this game is poised to snowball out of control in favor of King Zone 3,000 gold. This lead has ballooned. For the King Zone squad, they still need to close it out. And uh, so far, this series has been anything but predictable. Trisha Parage goes wide there as Neon holds on to his Banshee's Veil for one and two, now tidying up his play. Moving towards the, net, the last team fight. Aiming really needs a stopwatch as soon as possible. Oh, sell yeah. that Doran Shield for a stopwatch when he's got the right gold for it because the enemy team is single target pit comp and then uh, Kaiser swooping in. Not to mention the Rek'Sai there for any sort of follow-up damage. I mean, LeBlanc, Everyone WR converted. plus Rek'Sai is most people's health bar. Yep. And we were talking about this earlier on. I mean, not many people have much of a health bar. Is now uh -oh. Dread looking for the Predator. Gets forward but doesn't land the Body Slam. Is now aiming. He's very low. Another Void Seeker comes in as a stopwatch. He's going to buy some time. Deft over the top. But a huge knockoff from Senen. But I think they're too far behind. Cuz survived for so damn long as Neon gets into the back line and steals away a triple kill. 
Nayan giveth, Nayan taketh away, he wants another. Yep, he's just walking after Yukal, there's Got a the seismic chain. shove. All too easy as Rascal grabs the kill. And I'm sorry to say it, Papa Smithy, but I think top lane Karma is about to get a win. Well, at least in this one, there was a whole lot of people riding down the Karma train. The Karma Chameleon is going to pick up the victory here as Kingzone going 2-1 up after that game one loss. No one was predicting this. I was talking to all the Korean casters beforehand, and they were thinking, oh, Afrika Freak's probably going to take it. Kingzone, after that two-week break, looking a whole lot better. Not going to win it right here, but they do break open the base on the bottom side, and they've got an 8,000 gold lead at just 25 minutes in. Uh, Neon is officially decked out. This oh. guy needs to be put on the most wanted list. Where's that, Majoz? You know? There it's it is. there. <laughs> That's Perfect the way you got to go. That's the confidence. You know how he looks right now? A big neon smile. Oh, yeah. Maybe even bigger than usual. Because able. Dodges the cast. Exactly. That's all about that invincibility frame you have when you cast it as you go down into the ground. Aiming actually played this as good as he could after the fact. But one of those, well, if only this didn't start, then it would have been fine. They clean up from there. And for all you, Carl's Talia. In a draft where Afrika got ultra comfort, imagine what that means for the mental game of these young players uh, to give them what they want and I smack know. them down with it. Yep. There there there's a lot of concentration here. It's not this. There it is. There it is. I think he's feeling himself on that particular one. He seemed to be having even more fun than he usually does. He has fun in games they lose, Papa it's true. Well, that's not going to be this game. This one is hella over. Mm -hmm. 8,000 gold. Shoutouts to using Hella. I had that stuck in my head like a week ago. Yeah, I'm really glad that you brought it back. We're not allowed to use it because we're not from, I guess, California. Yeah, it's it's the California like... thing, I think, yeah. Wow. That was what, uh, that's what LA. Hang 10, dude. <laughs> Cowabunga. Wait, I think that's just a Bart Simpson reference. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, there's a Freak of Freaks. They're desperate to try not and early, find. Gnarly, dude. <laughs> it's radical, man. Wow. <laughs> reference. We're back in the right country now. Yeah. There's, uh, what's your surf brand of choice? Is it Rip, Rip Curl? Curl. <laughs> I was going to say. What about Billabong? Though? I know. Billabong's actually mine. Oh, the dream. What's the other one? There's another really famous one. Uh, Quicksilver. Yes. Yes. You could have gone there as well. brands. You know, what's a name that no one's chosen yet as a League of Legends name for Pokemon? Quicksilver would be a good one. That's not a bad one. I know. It makes him sound like a horse. They need to be a We got Quick Shot. Trick. Do we have any other Quick people? I don't think we do. I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe it's Quick Shot's just locked down the whole Quick He, he could have. Remember when he was Quick Shot with a zero I back know. in the day? Oh, he was so cool. <laughs> Well, it's a hurricane built by death, so it's exactly what you were talking yes. about. He is still going down the uh, more AD-focused route, just has himself a uh, Mirror Mana, yep. now a BF Sword. Well, the thing like is, like, you look at this and you're like, oh, isn't it scary to dive in there with how much damage there is on a Freakus side? Like, there's another game where we criticize Spilled from Death, but when you have a 7-1 LeBlanc and a Karma Shield and a Rek'Sai who's still actually... And Stand United. And remember, it's a Rek'Sai who has Kill Threat because, like, we both outlined... No, no, no beef anywhere. No yep. tankiness. Uh, you can afford to just wait a bit or just suicide down the back line and have everybody else pick up the kills. So it may not be the Kaiser Corky that was the meta comp for a long while in Korea, but it does actually play out pretty similarly. Uh oh, Neon's decided they can't go home. Yep, the flanking LeBlanc. It's a terrifying one as aiming gets poked out by the Void Seeker and Afrika just looks like they're getting corralled. There's no Alistair on this composition, but it looks like they're all in the paddock. They've got no home. Yeah, Kingzone uh, dictating exactly where Afrika are allowed to be and just poking them out here as well, playing with their food. And in goes Tucson. He's had enough of this playtime. It is a big cast, but they just don't have enough money. Death decides that it's over. A double kill for the Rek'Sai. An explosion of damage. It's a full house. Kaisers full of cousins. Mom decided that Afrika couldn't play League of Legends anymore, sent them to their room. Yep. They're going to have to go and use the time they have to try to come up with a plan because right now Kingzone are styling on their graves as they will win game number three. And they'll move to match point as well as Rascal, he had a couple of abilities to go golden there. The golden karma top is going to win finally.
in this series. Two losses in a row for the Karma. And then Rascal comes in with a Comet and takes down Afrika Freaks with the help of his friends, namely Naya. What well, turns out Kleptomancy was the problem because up the damage, up the intensity, and go for these pick comps in King Zone. Get it done. There's been times that they play with their food in summer season, and we've said, okay, ease of execution, make it easier. No MVPs in the playoffs. We're done with the MVPs for the year, but that one was definitely Neon getting over the line and Cuz having a pretty good game despite being red side Rek'Sai. The tears for Gen G might be happiness Aww. for King Zone as Gen G. Please give the, the gauntlet, gauntlet spirit, spirit to, to King, King Zone. Zone. Well, you know, they were more about denying people. Maybe, just maybe, the kiss of life from Ruler and Friends came out. This is a, a real momentum builder, though, for King Zone. I really love what they've done with the drafts in the last two games. I feel like the adaptation uh, from a game one that was pretty disappointing, despite it being very, very close. I think things have changed a lot as this series has developed and. I mean, I think the smart money was on Afrika still winning this, but not against this King Zone. I think, do we dare to dream, Parker? Love this. the taunt flash coming yeah. through to open up, and then everyone flies in. Depends what you're dreaming. So I think that King Zone have developed a read on Afrika, and I think it's cut from the same cloth as what Fnatic did against G2 in the first couple of games, where if you know a team ain't so smart, at playing around the map, which Afrika would definitely be guilty of, or on the side of G2, they're always trying to make two things happen when you're trying to make one thing happen. Yeah. Go for globals, go for pick comps, go for aggression in order to try to keep them in check. And Afrika, two games in a row, have tripped up prepping for a big objective and then been taken down by pick CC. And it was keen both times. The one player you give a pass on when it comes to playing the map is keen and he's let the team down a couple of times. Yeah, it's been a little bit iffy from him. Still time to turn it around, of course. It is match point for King Zone, but we could still have five games tonight. We'll feel a bit like six. We're certainly yeah. getting our money's worth, and we need it with Papa leaving relatively soon. We'll be back after the break.
원일이었어. 레블랑 원래 블랑 블랑 원. 끝날만 해. 끝날만 해. 아니야 아니야 아니야. 아 끝나 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 끝나. 누가 미소를 시켰어? 끝나냐 너? 아 누가 우리 하나 시켰어? 아 그래 끝날만 하냐고. 내가 한다. 나는 난 없어 있다. 나 쉴드 있어. 아 내가 한다 그래. 자 이거 빼라 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 